Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about Port de Bras de Van, Cambrai to the side and to the back, and the circular Port de Bras. So these are all very common movements in plie exercises, in run the jam exercises, in adage exercises, but there's more to it, I think, than sometimes meets the eye. So I'm gonna break it down today and explain the things where I used to go wrong and things that I've had to work on and things that we can all kind of be thinking about to really get the most out of our port de bras. So let's start with the forward bend, which can also be called port de bras de van. So we can do this in any position of the legs, but it's quite often done in the first plie exercise. And so we might well have our feet in first position. So there are two ways to do the port de bras de van. In the Russian method, and it's also the method that they use in Spain and quite a few other places where I've danced, then you go down with a flat back and the back stays straight and then you come back up. Now, if you do Royal Academy of Dance, then you'll know that it's not a straight back, that you actually can curve the back and then you can come up. So you will know the way that you're supposed to be doing it. I'm going to show the straight back way today because I think other than the Royal Academy of Dance, it's probably the more common way that we do the forward bend. So the most common mistake I think with the, with the Port de Bras de Van is this. So the legs and the hips should stay exactly where they are. So I'm going forward, but this is not going back to compensate. This is very easy, I'm not really using any muscles here. I'm just using my body weight to compensate. So really, the only way to do it without compensating is to really use the adductor. So this is gonna help you stay close and then keep your weight in the balls of the feet. Obviously your feet are gonna be flat on the floor, but the weight should be in the toes. As soon as the weight goes into the heels, that's when we have this happening. So we're gonna keep the abs engaged, pulled up all the way. We're going to try and keep the hips exactly where they are. They're not gonna move backwards and we're going to keep the weight in the toes. So it should be, hopefully, something like this. And forward. And up. Also remember to keep the knees engaged because it is tempting once you get down to go like this and let the knees relax. No, the knees should be engaged the whole time. So now when it comes to the cambrai, many different things can go wrong. <laughs> so the first thing that can happen is that we start the cambrai from here instead of from here. So we're immediately going from here. Whereas we want the cambrai to start right from the top of the back. In fact, there are some cambrais which only use the top of the back. It's really just this. There's no big arching or anything like that. Obviously, as you get more advanced, then the cambrais get deeper. But the start of every single cambrai back is from the top of the back. Other things that can happen in a cambrai back is that the hips start to go forward again to compensate for the change in the weight. But again, the idea of course is that the hips stay exactly where they are, the hips and the legs don't move at all. And again, in order for that to happen, we have to have the weight in the balls of the feet, we have to have the abs super engaged, the adductors pulling together, we're going to have the feeling of a lift before we go back, that's to make sure that we're not just collapsing backwards. So we have this feeling of lift and... Also remember in the cambrai that the head should be outwards. We're never going to do a cambrai with the head in line because it puts a lot of pressure on the neck. So it doesn't matter where your arm is, even if your arm is in second, if it's here, if it's in fifth, the head should still be looking outwards. So remember, the neck should stay relaxed. The cambrai is not about the head doing this. The head should stay in line. What's moving is the back. So now let's think about the cambrai to the side. This one is quite often done when we're in second position in a plie exercise, so I'll do it for an in second position. So the important thing with the cambrai to the side, as with everything that we've seen so far, is that it's not a collapsing. It's actually an elongating and going over. So try and think of the opposite side that you're working. So if I'm going this way, I'm not thinking about collapsing here. I'm actually thinking about 
elongating going over with the other side of my body. Common mistakes in a camera to the side is this shoulder going up. So remember, shoulders are always even. What changes is the torso. So this is what changes. If I come back up, the shoulders are still the same. There's none of this. This is not what I'm doing. The shoulders should still be even, always. And what makes it even more tempting to lift that shoulder is usually the arm comes to fifth. So of course, when the arm comes to fifth, there's a temptation to lift here. But no, keep the shoulder down and it's just the arm. And again, the arm as we go over, stays in fifth position. I'm not bringing it any closer to my head. Look at what position I'm in if I come up now. That's not a position. <laughs> so remember, the arm needs to stay in fifth position. And as you go over, it has the illusion of moving further over, but it's not going any further than a fifth position. Some teachers might mark the arms as second, fifth, and then you start the camera to the side, or some of them start the camera to the side even from here before the arms reach fifth position. But either way, the arm is not going to go any further than a fifth position. Obviously I'm doing this at a bit of a strange angle right now, so let me show you from the side. So usually the arm is going to come allonge to fifth, over and up. And quite often with a camera to the side, the head is going to look in the direction that I'm going. So for example, if I'm doing it in the centre, maybe again I'm still in the second position, and I'm going to come here, head goes this way, come back. So now that we've thought about the port de bras de bain, the cambrai to the side and the cambrai back, we can now think about the circular port de bras, which is a combination of all of those positions. Again, it can be done in any position, but it's most commonly done in fifth position. So I think with the circular port de bras, we're quite often thinking about, okay, I'm doing my port de bras de bain, then I'm doing my cambrai to the side, then I'm doing my cambrai back, and then I'm finishing. But actually, we've missed out two key points in the circular port de bras if we're only thinking about those three. And those points are the diagonal and the diagonal back. Because what we don't want to do is just go forwards and straight from here go side and straight from here go back. What we want to think about, because it's a circular port de bras, it should be the full circle. It's not a cross port de bras, one, two, three. It's a circle, so we need to think about the forward. Then here, this long line of the diagonal to bring me here, long line to the back and open. So remember, with all of these things that we've talked about today, it's not just about strength and alignment, it is also about flexibility. So it is really important to stretch out your hamstrings for the port de bras de bain and to stretch your back for the cambrai and of course the sides as well. So it's not just about strength and technique, we do also need flexibility to get the most out of these movements. So I will link all my stretching routines in the description below in case you want to go and check those out. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions or requests, leave them in the comments below and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.